Aloha, welcome back to the Sin Crew Radio Show, and uh, we're very delighted to have uh, Dan Legronio, our uh, our silver fox in the wings. Aloha. Looking well today, Dan. Um, you you have uh, color coordinated yourself. It's kind of you're wearing a kamehameha colors. You realize that blue and white. Blue Bo- and yeah. white. Yes, kamehameha. Yeah. Right? Very good. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And. Uh, our uh, a great friend of the Sammy Jalen Network Radio, um, Catherine Bachnight, filmmaker and uh, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful supporter and great friend of our station. And we say aloha to you, Catherine. Aloha. We welcome Leon. We're talking to Leon Sue from the island of Hawaii, chair of the Decolonization Alliance, headquartered at the United Nations Plaza in New York City. He also serves as a Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Kingdom of the Hawaiian Islands, a nation in the process of being restored as an independent state. So, uh, Aloha, Catherine. Aloha. So the Aloha Unity March in Waikiki had 10,000 people turn out and uh, the, to this two-mile march. And... Uh, you were there, right, Leon? Yes. Could you give us a live account of what it was like to be there? Sure. Uh, actually, it was called the Aloha Aina uh, Unity March, and the Aina is a very important part of it as well as, well as Aloha. And Aloha Aina means uh, love for the land, but not just the land. It means a love for this, uh, this uh, place called Hawaii. Um, and it's, it's the people and, and all the things, all the elements that go into making Hawaii very special. And uh, so we aloha that, meaning we, we love it as patriots love their country. So um, so the Aloha Aina March uh, started out there early in the morning. It, it was really uh, something put together fairly last minute, probably about a week out, some uh, people decided that they would uh, organize this march, and so it very organically grew into uh, large participation. Uh, of course, uh, with the help of Facebook and, and social media, it, it really expanded uh, its, its exposure very quickly. So people came, um, and roughly 10,000 people attended uh, or were in the march itself, and uh, it was quite a sight because... Uh, we have very rarely, as Hawaiians, had this type of large gatherings uh, as a show of unity and as a show of purpose for our uh, to re- recover our land and our, our jurisdiction, so to speak, in a Western term, to recover the right to govern ourselves. And uh, this uh, Aloha Aina March started, and, and the, its primary theme had to do was was triggered by the incidents on Mauna Kea, uh, where uh, Hawaiian people have been up there to protect the mountain from further development uh, with the installation of a very large telescope. It's called the 30-meter telescope, and that re- reflects the size of the reflecting surface of, of the telescope, and. Uh, it, the horrible thing is that this 30-meter telescope is housed in a building um, that covers uh, several acres as well as stands 180 feet high, uh, making it one of the largest buildings, uh, you know, uh, street-standing buildings in Hawaii um, outside of skyscrapers themselves. But this particular building it would be put right on top of a, a mountain that our mountain, Mauna Kea, that is nearly 14,000 feet tall. And so it would look, you would be able to see this very large structure. Uh, and and so the mountain is also a sacred mountain from uh, time immemorial, in which um, our people held, held very high respect and regard and set it aside as a place, uh, as a very spiritual place and a place for, of respect. And, of course, because of the height of the mountain, very few people actually uh, would go up there. So the, practically the only uh, use or, or um, um, utilizing of that mountain by our people in, in ancient Hawaii was for spiritual purposes, was for worship and, for, uh, and just to conduct 
Um, it's that spiritual connection between the, the earth and the sky. And then it was also used, of course, as an observatory, meaning that people, uh, Hawaiian navigators, would go there to observe the movement of the stars and all that. So it is an observatory already from ancient times, but it just, just doesn't have, didn't have these obtrusive uh, buildings. And for, uh, there already are 13 telescopes. Um, I think 11 or 12 of them are actually still operating. So this building has, uh, this mountain has already been abused and, and uh, 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 what's the word, uh, defiled by uh, the, these other telescopes that are out there. But now they want to put one on there that is a, a huge monster much larger than any of the other telescopes on the mountain. Uh, so there has been a very strong response or reaction to this new telescope that, that is being planned. And they're about to start construction, and so our people have, have gone up there to protect the mountain to block the construction of this 30-meter telescope. We had tried for years to block it through the courts, uh, but were denied uh, Know, our motion to, to block the, the project, and so now we're having to resort to putting uh, people in front of, of bulldozers and trucks that are attempting to go and build this telescope. Uh, so this rally that we had, or the, it was a march and then a rally afterwards, was a very, very uh, visual and exciting uh, gathering, because we not only had this particular one, but for over the last few months, there have been many smaller one, uh, many smaller demonstrations, and uh, uh, show of unity uh, all over the islands as well as around the world. So th this one was a culmination of uh, of the the building support for uh, our people and for the uh, for the. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the unity of our people and for the, the, the idea of restoring the sovereignty, uh, excuse me, the sovereignty is already there, but restoring our independent status as a nation, in other words, to be able to govern ourselves as the Hawaiian people. So this now crosses into the whole issue of the occupation of Hawaii uh, and becomes an example of why we need to become uh, self-governing uh, as a nation, as a sovereign nation, as we already are a sovereign nation, but we have been uh, suppressed and, and uh, 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 obscured by the presence of the United States and their occupation of the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, Leon, so mm -hmm. when you were at the march, uh, were there people that were, uh, I, I understand that there were organizations Organizations, many different organizations, schools, halals, and people who have been in sovereignty for over 30 years, and then also the the protectors that are of the new generation, the protectors mm -hmm. of Mauna Kea. So, what was that like to be in the midst of all of those people who had the sameness with this whole march and the the event, and and they were all there for the same reason? Very good. Good question. Uh, it was a really an exciting and exhilarating and, and a time of um, confirmation that this long struggle um, of identifying and restoring our nation um, is culminating in this kind of uh, 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 show of, of unity. Um, and so to have the young people there uh, was very, very meaningful to people like myself, who's been in the movement for uh, nearly 40 years, and uh, well, actually over 40 years now. And uh, but it it was very uh, exciting because now we have reinforcement. Now I, I shouldn't say now. This the, the movement has been growing over the years, but this was a great uh, picture of not only the fact that we have more people involved and that younger generation, but we also have um, uh, clarified our position and clarified our purpose, and that is to restore our nation. 
uh, before it was, you know, a lot of the, the ideas were that we were uh, restoring, um, or not restoring, but we we're trying to get human rights uh, to be treated better than, than uh, you know, and to to be allowed to live our lives the, the way we want to live. But now it's focused more on restoring our the political entity, the Hawaiian Kingdom, the, the nation of Hawaii, as a sovereign and independent state uh, within the international uh, picture. Okay, thank you. For those of you who just joined us, we're talking to Leon Su from the island of Hawaii, chair of the Decolonization Alliance headquartered at the United Nations Plaza in New York City. He's also served as the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Kingdom of Hawaiian Islands, a nation in the process of being restored as an independent state. So, Leon, you once told me in a previous conversation that you felt that the newcomers, uh, so to speak, the younger generation that are well-educated in all areas and also well-educated in the history, uh, speak the language, the Hawaiian language, and uh, are very well-educated in the culture. You said to me that it was a very organic transition to have them stand up for the Hawaiian culture. Can you explain that a little more? Uh, yes. Uh, there was a point of time, time uh, 40 years ago when our culture had nearly disappeared um, and the knowledge of, of the history of our, na of our nation had been terribly suppressed. And um, we were raised, my generation as well as uh, the ones following were raised to, to believe and understand and embrace uh, the United States as our country. Um, so what has happened is that over the last 40, uh, almost 50 years now, the, um, we have be begun to re-identify ourselves as Hawaiian nationals, that is, as people of, of a unique land with a unique history and with a history that we can be proud of uh, Hawaii was a, uh, a very progressive uh, constitutional monarchy and operated uh, in discourse with the rest of the world in a very active way. We had over 90 diplomatic legations around the world, something like 46 bilateral and multilateral treaties. So we were really a, a sovereign and, and functioning nation when we were taken over. So what has happened in recent years is that we've begun to not only identify our culture, but also to identify our status, our political status as a nation. And so the culture has is solidly uh, underscoring the fact that we are a, a, a unique and a uh, united people around uh, <clears throat> our land and connected to our land connected to our culture, connected to ancient things, but also connected to one another as a political entity, as a sovereign people. So this has been very, very exciting to see uh, develop. And when we have crises like this, uh, what's going on on Mauna Kea with a 30-meter telescope, uh, it unites our people even more. And so this uh, March uh, last week what is a is an example of that, of our people being united because we identify ourselves as uh, patriots to our land, aloha ina. And I understand that everything was done with aloha, all the organizations that possibly in the past have not been able to uh, connect or communicate are now on that path with aloha. Yes, yes. And, and as you said, the, the culture uh, has, has become more prominent, and, and one of the great aspects of our culture, of course, is aloha. And, of course, aloha is not specific only to Hawaii. Everyone has aloha for their country. But the Hawaiians have a, a unique way of expressing that, and that is, a, uh, as we saw when our queen stepped back in order to allow, uh, to, to not provoke uh, bloodshed when she was being confronted and uh, being, when her, her land, our, her kingdom was being taken over. So this is the same spirit in which we have uh, decided 
made a, a conscious decision that we would not uh, try to approach it in a violent way, that we would not um, do any kind of form of violence, but we would be steadfast in our aloha, and by doing so, we would actually be causing uh, the conflict to de-escalate, and because we would would put ourselves out, out forward as a people who even love our enemies and show show respect for those that are trying to persecute us, um, and this is great because our young generation has embraced this as the method in which they would uh, approach this uh, this crisis. And, this, and so they have adopted the Queens and our, our people's own natural way of approaching the crisis or approaching danger um, and doing it with aloha. In other words, doing it in a peaceful manner and doing it with a respectful manner. Um, Still standing strong for your principles, but not to the point of where you resort to violence. And uh, you obviously saw many faces that you've seen throughout your life at this yes. march. And uh, is it true that you saw new faces? Oh yes, many, many new faces. And of course, uh, there were the, this particular march bridged the generations. You know, there were kupuna uh, who I have known for many years that meaning elders, and and then they were all the way down to babies, you know, in strollers or, or being carried. So this was a real generational march, and which is the way that Hawaiians see themselves. We see our culture as an ohana, as, as bridging all of the generations, working together and, and in harmony, uh, and in a, in a way that uh, exemplifies the kind of people we are. So the kupuna, the makua, the, the parents, age, and and those exemplify for the younger people, the opio and the keiki, exemplify how we are to behave as a people and what is, and, and that is a cultural basis which we pass on to the next generation. So it was very, the, the march, I saw very many people who've been involved in the movement for many years and uh, and we have had rallies before in the past, but this one was really special. This one was um, really a uh, display of aloha, of, of how our people are, are going to uniquely approach this big problem that we have. Mahalo, Leon. This is Kamaka Brown, and uh, we're going to take a break right now. We'll be right back. Uh, interesting conversation. We're talking with Leon Seal and uh, Catherine Bachnight. This is V93FM.com, the Sandwich Islands Network Radio. We will be right back. Mauna Kea Now is sponsored by Hawaii, A Voice for Sovereignty, a documentary film by photojournalist Catherine Bachnight that explores the culture of the native Hawaiians and their connection to the land. At the forefront of the film are social, economical, and ecological issues that have developed in Hawaii since the takeover by the U.S. in 1893, revealed in interviews with grassroots indigenous people and scholars such as author Haunani K. Trask. The documentary's goal is to raise awareness of the issues faced by the Native Hawaiians, which threatens their ancient and environmentally sustainable culture. Bach Knight brings this film to the world stage by theatrical release, screenings at international film festivals, and television programming. More information at hawaiiavoiceforsovereignty.com. <laughs> 